Hello, everyone. So this is the last question on 2023 MC um, 10A. And also this was, I guess, 21 on 12A. So it's a straightforward question, but it's kind of hard to understand what's going on. First, it says there are two points, like versus of a polyhedron. And we have a special definition. It's given right here. This in between A and B is going to be the minimum number of edges of that polyhedron that you have to travel in order to get from point A to B. Like they give us an example. So for example, if you're like at this point, so let's say this is A and let's say this is B. So the, the shortest path you can go is just going through this edge. So that's gonna be one edge only. So that's why the distance between A to B is gonna be one, even though you can go this way or you can go like a lot of different ways, but you are looking for the shortest one. So that's one. So if you look at the point C, for example, so you can go this way and that way. So that's just gonna be two. So I guess this is also two. There's no other ways to get two ways. Okay, so that is the definition of that distance. And by the way, these two visuals are not part of the question. It's just part of the solution. I just added to make it a bit quicker. Okay, and based on this, uh, the question is asking you, there are three uh, like points, Q, R, S, are this thing vertices of a regular icosahedron, so which is basically name of a 20-sided uh, polyhedron. And I'm not sure if you are aware, but this is actually the MMA logo. So if you were taking it as on the paper, so this was actually on the, the booklet, not fully, but uh, partially, I guess, but you could still uh, complete. So that is just a side note. And this is the, the front, uh, I guess face of that polyhedron. If you look at as two D, and this is the three D, uh, one of the visuals that I can kind of use it. So just keep these two in mind because I will use these two and to make it two different solution. Okay. So in the question asking you, what is the probability that the distance between Q and R is larger than distance between R and S? Okay. So again, make sure you understand the question before you attempt anything. So we are going to give three different points on the uh, any like vertices. But before we move on, maybe we should know how many vertices we have and stuff. So we have 20 equilateral triangle, right? So you can count them. So in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have 10 on this side, 10 on the other side, which is going to be 20 faces. So the face is 20. Okay. And then we do have like each face has three sides because it's equilateral triangle. So you do have three times like um, three times uh, 20, which is gonna be 60 edges. But you know, this edge, if you consider this edge, this edge is gonna be counted in this triangle, in this triangle as well. So which means every, it, this edge will count in this triangle and in this triangle. So every single edge is gonna be counted twice. If I just say three, times 20. So the number of edges is gonna be uh, 20 times three over two, because we have to fix that over counting, which will be 30. So why I'm writing this? Because even though we don't really need this part, I'm just making a kind of a, another note for us to remember, because I guess number 18 was a question was asking us to remember the Euler's like uh, polydron um formula so in terms of like uh edges and size whatever so if you don't remember that was something like this so the the number of faces uh plus number of vertices minus number of edges so you can rewrite this in a different way that is going to be two so one way to good way to remember these maybe start with some the smaller uh, cases let's say cube or rectangular prism okay and then find the number of faces vertices and edges and see if uh, there's a relation between those and then make this a five-sided uh, figure with 3D and stuff. Just explore this. If you do explore, so it will be obvious to remember. And this is the relation between the number of faces, vertices, and edges in any polyhedron. Okay, and then that's called Euler's formula. And we have 20 faces. So let's write here. And we don't know the number of vertices minus uh, 30. This should be two from here. So the number of vertices is actually uh, 14, right? Let me double check. No, 12. Okay, so 
Um, yeah, that's 12. So we have 12 vertices. Why we need them? We don't really need it, but I just write it because this is also important for us to remember. And sometimes we can use these to confirm our like counting at some point. But for this question, I don't really need this part, okay? So let's move on. So the question says, like, uh, what will the probability of the distance between two points, R and Q, R and S, um, going to be one is larger than the other one? So, so I can start with the case work. You know, that is not a big deal. So, like, if I say, you know, the distance between any two points, since they are all distinct, cannot be zero. So it has to be at least one. If this is one, and then this could be anything, right? So the case one, I will say, let's do this right here. Case one, the, the distance between R and S will be one, and this between Q and R could be two or three. There's no way to get four. So I'm gonna use this picture for the example of the other first solution, okay? So let's think about, this is my, let's use the different color. Let's say this is my point R, right? So from this point R, there are five other vertices, like the one, two, three, four, and five. So again, I can choose R at any point. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be this one. I just choose this one because I can see all other five points that is one unit away from the point R. I could choose this one. I could choose this one uh, to see all those five points. But if I choose this one, I need to visualize the next um, other points in the other side of the this picture, okay? But that's why I chose this R right here. So we have five points, okay? That is one unit away. So for every um, point you choose, let's say this is the, I don't know, S, okay, for example, so then the Q has to be two units at least away from R. So two units away from this R. So imagine like we have, let's, like we have 10, vertices by the way right here so one maybe i should label those one two three four five like six seven eight nine did i count something wrong this is a uh, nine so we have like you know this point three if you just uh, visualize the background of this one so there is another point that corresponds to this point so I will call that is 10 as well, even though it's not on this side, but on the other side, it's kind of in the same position. And then 10, so 11 will be maybe here, and then 12 will be right here. So which is why we have 12 vertices, which is good to see because there was number of vertices. So of those 12 vertices, I just like to know how many of those are gonna be at least two units away from the point R. So none of these, um, this is not gonna work, but the seven is one of them. So let me label this. So this guy has two units away. Okay, this guy has two units away. And then this guy has two units away. So far we have three, but be careful. This is the only front face. So if you just visualize the back side, so the R, like the, the, the edge, I mean, the vertex three, is just the point R, but vertex 10 is actually two units away. So if you just go this way and then move on this direction, so you will get another point, which would be um, two units away at least. I mean, not at least, but just, yeah, at least two units away because you can go other directions. And also we have 11 and then we have 12. Those are also on the other side that is at least two units away from the point R. So how many do we have? So we have six of them. Okay, so the case one is just the number of ways that would give us at least one unit. So that is gonna be, if this is one, then there are 30 different ways to uh, choose two points for uh, Q and S, okay? That is good. And the second case, let's go with the now second case. Um, if the distance between the R and S is two, so maybe I should clean this a bit so we can kind of see visually, but let me actually keep it still. So if this is um, two units instead of one unit, which will have less number of choices, because imagine if this is the point R, two units away from will not be two, one, two, four, 
but that will be this point one because you can go this direction or you can have this point or you can have this point. So far we have three points, but we careful. So the, the 10 in this case, even though on the other side, you can go one and then to the 10, which is gonna be two, which is not larger. So we can accept that one. So that's why 10 is not acceptable, but 11 and 12 is when you just visualize that you can go one, two, and then to 12, that will be three. So which means 11 is good, 12 is good. So one, two, three, four, five. So there was um, five points that is um, away from the, at least um, like more than two units away from the uh, point R. So there is no way to get three. If this is three, this has to be four, which there is no four is away from the any point from another point. So which is why these are the only two cases. So now the probability will be the number of ways that we want is the sum of these two cases. So that should be 30 plus five. And the total is easier because you have total of like, you know, 12 vertices, we count it, right? So, and then one of them is R, so which means I need to choose two other, I mean, yeah, I need to determine two other points, I would say. So uh, from remain 11 points. For the first point, I can have 11 option. For the second point, I have 10 option. I don't want to divide by two because it doesn't matter where you put those points because when you cho choose, like change the position of R and S, it will be different arrangements. So which is why we don't want to divide by two. That's 35 over uh, 110, so divide by five, so that should be seven and two times will be 22, okay? So this is the first approach. If you really use this uh, 2D shape, which you can actually easily draw, which is gonna be uh, this much work. So the second approach is actually using the 3D. Maybe you don't have to use it, if, especially if you can visually see, it. but if you cannot, that's still okay. So I just have it right here. Um, what I'm gonna try in the second approach is using complementary counting. So what is that look like? So I just like, you know, the distance between any two points could be either equal to each other or one is larger than the other one. So which means, you know, the if this is larger than this, which means this is lesser than this, or if this is lesser than that, this is larger than this and stuff like that, or they are equal to each other. So you have basically three different um, uh, cases as add up to one because the total probability is just one. But the number of ways that, I mean, the probability of getting this guy to be larger than this is the same as this guy is larger than this. So which is why if I know the probability of getting those two equal to each other, then I can just subtract from one to get the other two cases and divide by two to get each case. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So the first things first, I'd like to see, uh, I'm gonna use the point R right now as the top point because it's kind of easier to visually see it. So this is between R to uh, any points. Let's think about like one unit away. So this is one unit away. I'm gonna label as one. This is also one unit away. This is also one unit away. This is also, this is also. All of these, um, the vertices ha has a distance of one from the R. And this guy has two. So if you just imagine, so this is two, this is two, this is two. And this is two. So, I mean, this is three. The last one is three. So you could have only two cases where the distance are equal. So either they are gonna be one unit away from the point R or two units. So how many uh, ways can I actually split R and S among those five points? So I can choose like five, uh, one of those five points for the R, for example, and then you can choose one of the other four for S, so that means there are 20 ways to distribute R and S among these five points. Okay, and then the same thing with the those two units away from points, which is five times four, which would be like 20, 20 is 40. So this is the number of ways that they will e be equal to each other. So what is the probability then? So the total number of ways we already know, that's 11 times 10. So then I can just see, so probably what will be 11, 10 minus, this is gonna be number of ways they will be equal to each other. 
divided by 110. But when I do this, you know, I just subtract the number of ways the, they are going to be equal to each other when I write the ratio, which is going to be the probability of getting this distance equal to this distance, which is going to be this. But I should divide this by two because this is going to count either this is larger than the, this or this is uh, smaller than this. So because you could have those two cases and each case is equal. So we should just multiply this by one half to get what we want. And if you really do it, so that will be 70 over 110. So zeros will cancel, seven over 11 times one half, seven over 22. So we are kind of lucky because they didn't really give us a choice that is like seven over 11. So maybe that would be another choice for most people to choose for, but I think that is, that is good to not have, okay? So I hope that makes sense. So we just kind of try to use two different um, uh, ways to do this problem. So that was, um, I guess challenging for sure, um, but it is, I guess, uh, hopeful, like clear at this point. So I'll see you in the next video.